How you doing everyone? So today we're going to be having a look at the Deuter Ascender 7 running vest. So that's it just there. You quick spin it back. And yeah, so Deuter, it's not a brand you normally associate with running. A German brand mostly associated with doing hiking packs. Uh, but I've been able to get my hands on one of these, the Ascender 7. The Ascender 7 is not the latest pack, so it has been out for a while. But I've had a, a shot of this. I've used it a fair few times. Uh, definitely got some some thoughts on it. Some positive, quite a few not so positive, but, but it's not all bad. So let me show you through some of the features. So first off, uh, where should we start? We'll start off with the soft flask, flask pockets. So you've got two 500 mil soft flask, flask pockets. I can't even say the word flask. So the one I got, I didn't actually get any flasks with it. And I don't think they come as standard, but I've grabbed a couple of different type of flasks. I've got a cupboard full of them. So they all come in different shapes and sizes. So I've grabbed a Salomon flask and a Montaigne flask. Just one thing to take in mind with these, is when you put the flasks in, pop into those pockets, they're pretty high on me. So they stick out quite a long way. They're not the, it's not the fattest of pockets. So it couldn't really, like to have Ultimate Direction soft flasks. They're a bit shorter and a bit fatter. Uh, both of these are fairly tall and skinny, but they stick out the top quite a long way and the tops are higher than I'm used to. I'm used to kind of like bending my neck down a little bit and um, taking water out that way. So keep in mind, depending on what type of flasks you've got, they probably will fit in there, but they might not fit in perfectly as these don't. So I'm gonna whip them out. So you can fit two soft flasks in there. I think it would probably actually take smaller flasks better, to be honest. Right, you've got sternum straps just here, two sternum straps, uh, which are adjustable. If you see on here, you can adjust where these clips go, but it, they're not very straightforward. On a lot of other packs, you can just quickly off the hoof, adjust where they go. On UD packs, they just slide up and down. These, you've got to bend it round and feed it back on itself, and it's just a bit of a faff. Not the end of the world. Once you've got it set up to where you want it, absolutely fine, because you're probably not going to adjust it again. But initially, uh, a bit more of a faff than it needed to be, really. So two pockets, uh, you've got, so two pockets, you've got another pocket just here. Takes a phone, if I find my phone, iPhone, a standard size, not an enormous one. That goes in easily. So that easily fits in, and there's loads of spare room as well. So you could get a big phone in this pocket. So you've got that pocket there, which is a good, good size. I like that pocket. Over this side, we've got this weird pocket here. Yeah, I've watched some other videos on this pack. Uh, the only other videos I could find on this pack were European ones, had to watch it through subtitles. And everyone was raving about this pocket here. I'm not a fan. I don't think it's very good. So you've got this pocket here, it's got a little bit of Velcro on the back so you can theoretically tuck it back on itself so it doesn't hang down. But yeah, why are you trying to do that? I don't know. But it hangs down like so and it's designed for your poles. So if I've got my poles here, stick them in, tip down. Over here you've got another strap, goes over the top and that's your poles held in there, which is okay. Uh, it does work as well when you've got a soft flask filled with water in there as well, so it doesn't really get in the way. But when you're running, these jiggle about. So when you're doing this, it's held okay up here with this strap, but there's no strap at the bottom. You've got this rigid bit around the top of this pocket, but there's no way to cinch it tight. So they actually bounce about. Plus. I've got both my poles on one side. I like having one pole each side because it keeps things weighted the same. If you've got certain things, if you've got going out with um, one soft flask full of water 
and poles, make sure your soft flask is in that pocket to counteract the kind of weight. Otherwise, everything's going to be hanging down one side. I much prefer, it's good that they put the pole pocket at the front. It's a weird design. I don't think you need a design like that. It's much better just having a pole here and a pole here. So I'm not a fan of that. Most of the time you're not going to be using poles anyway. So then you're stuck with this stupid pocket that flaps it out. The Velcro doesn't really stick very well uh, to keep it tucked away. I did think this would be actually kind of handy for if you're doing a longer run and you've got gels and you want to put some rubbish in there. But it's a bit excessive for a little rubbish packet. And again, it flaps about. So not the best pocket in the world. It's a bit rubbish, really. So I took it back on itself. So we've gone over sternum straps, soft flask pockets, zip pocket, which is good. That's a good one. Uh, that pocket's part of the poo. So we'll forget about that one. On the sides here, yeah, I don't want to sound too overly negative. I'll not go to the side bit. <laughs> I'm not too keen on straight away. When you run in with the pack, it fits really nice. There's no bounce, clings to your body really nicely. So when you're just running and you, you carry in minimal gear, it's absolutely fine. It's, it's a good pack. Uh, it doesn't bounce about at all. As I say, it fits nicely over here. That is adjustments on the back here. You can cinch in. Yeah, you've got a couple of cords there. I can pull those in. And as I pull those, it tensions the back. Um, so if you don't have a lot of stuff in the vest, uh, you can cinch it in so the stuff in the side, the back there, doesn't bounce about. Which is kind of good, but there's only adjustment at the bottom. So there's no adjustment at the top. So this is still kind of quite free and open and can be flappy. Nobody wants a flappy pack. Uh, right, yeah. So fits nicely. Pockets on the side here, a good race vest. I don't care what anyone says, a good race vest has really good dump pockets here and here. You can put your gloves in there, you can put your gels in there, your head torch, your jacket, whatever you want. You want to be able to access it at the front. On this pack, they've got two pockets, one just here and one on the other side, same position. They're really out of the way. They're, you've really got to be able to bend your arm right the way around and then they're on a really odd angle as well. So depending on what depending on what you put in there, it has the potential to fall out. They are slanted slightly upwards, but not overly. And as I say, depending on what the shape of the thing that you put in there, you might just be a bit conscious of, oh, is that still there? Has that fallen out? And they're not very deep. So they've got pockets here and here, but they're not here. Why on earth anyone thought putting the pockets over there, let's put the pocket in a really awkward place, not make them very big and put them on a really weird angle. Who thought that was a good idea? Yeah. <laughs> As I say, this isn't the most up-to-date uh, vest. There is a newer um, race vest out, I believe. I've not actually seen it, but I'm hoping they've learned from some of the things I'm pointing out here. All right, let's take the vest off, show you some other features so on the back we have is the back of the vest so reflective so it should shine up anyone shining a head torch on it in the night you do have an attachment on the back here so you could theoretically put a pole across the back if you wanted to i don't know why you'd want to because you want to have them accessible at the front uh, you've got a big pocket just here it doesn't open fully. So the pocket opens nice and down to there, but it only opens to there. So it opens on a kind of angle, like so. I call me picky, but I'd rather the higher bit of the zip zipped all the way down to the same side as the other, so you can open it more fully. It's not the end of the world. On the back here, uh, you do have the capability to attach a two litre bladder. So if you prefer using bladders over soft flasks, or if you're gonna go out on a really long hot run and you have to take a lot of liquids, you do have the capability to carry two litres 
in a bladder, along with your two 500 mil soft lasks, that'd be three liters. Just think of that as three kilos as well. So you're only gonna do that if it's really hot and water is limited. In the back here, you've got this spongy, spongy back panel, which can pull out. So you could theoretically make the bag a little lighter by removing this. This is quite comfy and it spreads the, the sweat as well. So if you're hot, well, you're gonna be hot. You're running, you're gonna get hot. That spreads the moisture around and it's it's got a nice sponginess to it. So that's actually quite a nice feature. I wouldn't be removing that. Weight of the pack itself is 315 grams. It's not the lightest weight material in the world. It is durable. It does feel like a solid, solid material. So it's got, that's a positive, it's gonna be durable. It's not the lightest, it, feel, it just feels like old fashioned materials that we're using. On the side here, you have these straps at the side so you can cinch, cinch the pack in depending on your size, shape, everyone's a different shape. You do have adjustments on there and it does adjust nicely to, uh, yeah, you can go from a big size, cinch into a smaller size, and it fits nicely, doesn't bounce about. They're just using really old-fashioned materials. That's just a bit of old-fashioned thick bungee cord, uh, which, yeah, it's it does the job. It's strong, and, yeah, but it's not light. And it's just it's like something that they used a long time ago in packs. So they're not really using the most up-to-date materials with this pack. They've got the, the huggingness and the, the fit really nice. Just the features are a bit all over the show. Going back to more positives, on the back bit here, you've got this, you do have plenty of zips. You had that compartment in there that you could put your bladder, um, or where the, this, this part went, which was nice and comfortable on your back. You've got a separate compartment where the bladder could either sit or maybe the bladder could go in that back bit. Depends what you're carrying. And you've also got a zip section just here so you can keep things contained uh, and stop them flapping about. You've got your standard kind of key fob in there. And also on the back here, they've got a nice little feature. It's not amazing, but it's it. Some safety instructions. So just printed on the back there in case you get stuck uh, out in the middle of nowhere. It's got signals to air rescue, what to, how to signal um, if you need help from the air and first aid information. So the, the compartments inside, they do have some nice little compartments, zippered, zippered parts and multiple compartments in there and a big compartment as well. I just wish that zipped open a bit more that is pretty much the main features on the you on the back here on the back somewhere here that is where your bladder your tube for your bladder would feed through and it would go over if i pop, quickly pop that back on the tube would come out and then it would feed through a couple of loops and you could access the the tube from there so Good point point on this particular pack is it's really cheap. So you can get this pack. I've just done a quick search, instantly found it, 29 pound. 29 pound for this pack is a bargain. So if you don't own a pack and you want a run invest, you don't want to spend a lot and you want something that fits your back nicely, doesn't bounce, it's got a fair few pockets. They may not be in the ideal location, but you get what you pay for. 29 pound, this is an absolute steal. So it's definitely got some positive points about it. It's got loads of features that aren't quite there. And if you're gonna be spending much more money, I think it retails full price for 90 pounds, uh, but you're gonna be able to find it cheaper than that on the internet because it's been out for a wee while. If you're gonna spend 90 pounds, there's loads of much better packs to buy out there. I wouldn't be even looking at this uh, for full price, but if you can get it for half price, yeah, and you don't own a pack, you don't want to spend a lot of money, it's a good solid buy. So that was the 
Deuter Ascender 7 running vest. Hopefully, as I say, they've learned from some of the issues. Uh, it'd be good to actually have a look at one of the new ones. I might try and get my hands on it and have a chat with the Deuter guy that I know and point out these features <laughs> that I've just pointed out to you guys. Hope that was of some use to you. At least you got a video on this pack in English instead of um, watching it in subtitles. And yeah, get out there, get running, enjoy your day, and I'll catch you next time.